Good morning and welcome to PSJ Java Chat, your morning chat with your favorite PSJ ISD instructional technology integration specialist, where we discuss edtech tools and trends with invited guests and of course our morning coffee. In episode two of Java Chat, Lori De Los Santos from Ford Elementary talks to us about how as a CLM SCAT helps her teachers integrate technology and showcases their student newscast that happens every morning. Good morning everyone and welcome to our second episode of Java Chat. Today we're going to be highlighting Lori De Los Santos, our CIT and CLM at PSJ Ford Elementary. Lori, good morning. Good morning. So to start us off, let's just chill and ask you a nice questions about what is your favorite thing to do outside of school? Right when I get home, I turn on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> right now I'm binging on Suits. So okay. it's a really, really good uh, series if y'all haven't watched it. So that's what I do when I get home. I like it. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing. I don't know if Marco and Debbie is, but I've been telling Debbie, I'm like, I, I get so tired. I get home. I just want to lay down and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. So we're still using technology at home. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's move on and ask you then, uh, what's your favorite tech gadget? And that could be at home or at school, you know, your work, personal. What so, like kind of gadget? I, I think right now it's really cool that all the teachers on my campus have um, their own iPad. So I love the ease of, you know, moving around and then be able to teach from anywhere in the classroom. So right now I'd have to say iPad in the classroom. Nice. That is awesome. Uh, the, I, I help out with the middle schools now, Lori, uh, you know that. And and I just had a school yesterday at ECG to middle school and they just got their iPads yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, Audie Murphy is barely getting their iPads. And so I can't wait to show them what you all are already doing, which is like the good notes, which is like staying in the power zone mm -hmm. and doing all that good stuff. So that's awesome. I'm glad that you that that is your favorite gadget. And I'm hoping to spread that same kind of joy to the, the middle school teachers. And I hope I hope hopefully it works out equally the same as it does in elementary. So yes. I kind of progressing on to. Uh, the next question here, I guess, keeping it technology wise, I know you really like the iPad that you just said right now, but what is one thing, uh, another uh, technology, I guess, thing that you couldn't live without? I would have to say my cell phone, like <laughs> that connects me to everything, like family, to work, anything going on, like somebody needs me, like I need to have my phone. Yesterday, um, I was in the front office and I left my phone um, in my classroom. And so the secretary comes, she's like, Lori, where are you? Like, we've been looking for you. I'm like, oh, I don't have my phone. So I need it to stay connected to everyone. It is kind of interesting <laughs> and sad how yes. cell phones have become so <laughs> dependent. Uh, like the, sure. the, the guys here, I've told them the story and to Debbie and Marco, like I've gotten my cell phone stolen, I think like four times already. And it feels like, I got violated. Like it's just, <laughs> just so horrible because I like if I'm traveling, I don't have access to my boarding passes. I don't have access to anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yes. I, I can feel that dependency yeah. in technology <laughs> that way. Yeah. It's a it's a computer I, in your pocket. It is. Yeah. I want to move on to a, a different section now and talk about more your expertise with technology and your job and education. So I know that you've used this and how you use technology to differentiate in, in instruction. What are ways that you've done it? How did you differentiate in, instruction using technology? So because I'm a CLL, um, I meet with all the great levels on my campus. So whenever I find a tool or an app that I think is um, beneficial to the teachers, I do mm -hmm. have to find a way to show them how they can differentiate it in their classroom. So, um, for example, Canva. Um, there's so many um, cool ways to use Canva, but I have to find a way that my pre-K teachers can use it as well as my fifth grade teachers. So um, we look at curriculum and then we see like, okay, pre-Kers, you know, you can create flashcards or you can create bingos. And then the upper grades, you know, you can create your slide presentations or have the kids create something. Nice. So always differentiating with teachers um, on my end as a CLL. So, so the students actually use Canva as well? In We're your, in trying to push them. Nice. To I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. 
And I love that you are tying it into the curriculum because there is so many different ways that you could use Canva to make products, mm-hmm. you know, tying it in with that, with the curriculum. So great use of using Canva. So how, I know you work with the teachers of all levels. How do you and your teachers use technology to help promote the collaboration and communication in the classroom? So um, the teachers on my campus are very comfortable with Nearpod. Um, I think because we've been using that platform for such a long time. So um, they are comfortable using like the the boards on there where the kids can, you know, answer and collaborate with each other. I know once upon a time it was like a, the Google Meets or Google Slides, but now, you know, this is much easier and they're comfortable with that. Um, in my CLCs, I still sometimes go back to Padlet. I still, you know, enjoy using Padlet um, to get feedback or for the teachers to collaborate with each other. Yeah, they're all great tools, you know, and so Mm -hmm. and they're very similar. And so they work in the same way. And it's kind of nice to change up and not do the same exact thing every time. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, sometimes they might have like little different tools that the other one does it. And it's good to learn them all. Mm hmm. Hey, Lori, so kind of going, you, I think you're somewhat answering the next question with, uh, with, with your explanation about using Nearpod and using Padlet. Um, so my next question for you is, how do you use uh, technology to assess student learning? Mm-hmm. So Nearpod, of course, hands down is um, a great tool to get, you know, instant feedback and to um Uh, correct students and, you know, redirect them. Um, So I love, love, love Nearpod. Another platform that the teachers are using is the Cambium platform, of course, because that's the way that the kids will be testing STAR. So they are getting the kids um, familiarized with, um, you know, test taking online because that's the way we're going, Um, especially our third graders that will be taking the STAR for the first time this year. I love it too, because, uh, now that you brought up Cambium and you brought up Nearpod, they can practice uh, without going into Cambium every time. You can practice doing those new star item types in Nearpod. Right. So I think it's 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 an awesome tool. Nearpod's an awesome tool, and it would be great if you know uh, we can get more educators to have students practice on it. So it gets them ready for the Cambium uh, for the test on Cambium. But for sure. awesome, Lori. Mm-hmm. Lori, how do you stay up to date with the latest trends in technology and education? So um, TCEA is always putting out, you know, blogs and um, new tools that they find interesting. So um, whenever you you all push out like those um, those links, I like to go in and see if there's anything, you know, that could benefit the teachers and students at my campus. So TCEA for sure. Um, Also collaborating with other CITs like our CIT chat is very, very helpful. Um, there's, you know, somebody comes across something and you know, they'll post it right away so we can, so we can look, look at it and maybe try it out on campus. And then of course you guys, like you mm-hmm. guys are always bringing like new tools to us to use. Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so we try to, we try ourselves to immerse as much as we can so we can share it with y'all. So that's, that's awesome that you're taking advantage of that. Thank you, Lori. Yeah, and it's nice to see it turned around and we're, you know, used with students and, you know, what your their teachers are doing in the classroom. That's good. So I have a question for you. If you can think back to your childhood, what is your favorite memory of tech, like from your childhood? Okay, you Debbie, you want me to date myself? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would go way farther back, Lori, because, you know, there was really not a lot of tech back in my day. So. Your childhood could You're be so yesterday, much Lori. <laughs> <laughs> so once upon a time, um, there was this um, gaming system called an Atari. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love the Atari. And, like, that technology was, like, unheard of back then and it was just the little ball just going up and down and you know you just wanted to catch it between so um I would say um gaming systems like the Atari and Nintendo um it's just wild to think how far technology has come in those short years <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awesome Lori uh, I was thinking as, as soon as um the question was asked i was thinking about video games too because i play 
and I remember when I was young, I, I when I played a Nintendo 64 for the first time, I was like, oh my goodness, this is like real life. Like these are people, <laughs> and you know, looking back at it, it was like, well, it's only you know that was 64 pixels or whatever. It's not even close, but <laughs> but at the time, you're like, oh my goodness. Right. Um, <laughs> hey, so. <laughs> So Lori, I, w- I want to go on and ask you, um, whether it's you or whether it's somebody you've seen, what's the most creative way you've seen technology used in education? So I think that robotics is really, really cool. Um, the way the kids <clears throat> are able to program the robots is amazing. Um, so one, robotics. Um, another one would be AI. AI has just seemed to take over, um, I guess, in a good way, (laughs) good, bad, (laughs) I mean, um, but um, it's so helpful and it saves us educators a lot of time also. Yeah, real quickly, we, Debbie and I met an educator from a different district yesterday and they were saying how they didn't allow any AI in their district. And I thought about you immediately and I said, well, and Debbie was kind of like, uh, AI should be allowed. It's it's the future. And I was explaining to him the uh, presentation that you had in last, it was at last week's Unmute and Recharge or two weeks ago, mm-hmm. um, that one and also what you did at the, at the tech conference. And so I said, hey, look, there's this AI and I was thinking about you and I said, you could pick the subject, the grade level, the teaks, and mm-hmm. and so I I agree with you 100%. AI is one of those uh, those um, uh, new things that I think you know all school districts should let uh, be available to all the all the teachers. So anyway, what was the name of that program, Lori? Can you tell us like a little it's bit about called, that? Uh huh. It's called EduAid.ai. And so um, it has so many tools embedded in it. Um, one of them is um, creating activities for your students. The, the district does such a great job of um, creating a curriculum for us. Um, but at the same time, we can use the AI to supplement with additional activities. It can create SIF activities, additional differentiated assessments. Um, it can also u- um, help counselors like on the SEL side, it creates SEL activities, IEPs, so many um, cool tools on on that website. So highly recommend. And that one is the one that you did during our tech conference, correct? Yes. Mm-hmm. And during the the um, unmute and recharge. Unmute and recharge. Mm-hmm. So those we have recorded. If you want to share them with 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 your campus staff, you can just share the link because it's already on our website and YouTube. Okay, your cool. your little recording. So I'm super excited about it. Now I'm gonna bring you to somewhere that I experienced and I was super excited at your campus. Okay. So I want you to talk to me about the current tech innovations that you have been doing this year. And uh, we've had this conversation because you got a new principal who's super gun ho about helping and doing a lot of new things, and you're doing this newscast in your campus i want just to talk about a little bit about it what what what's working what are been some of the struggles that you've been having and and how can we make it even boom because i'm super Uh excited super stoked yes so um this year we started our live newscast with um, the students bringing um the news and the announcements every morning to um, the classrooms we stream it through teams and so everybody all teachers log in the kids are live in front of a camera um they go over the weather the menu the lunch menu for the day birth dates um any important announcements and they really really enjoy it so the beginning um when Ms. Villanueva brought the idea to us um of course it was a little i was a little hesitant i didn't know how it was gonna go <laughs> how are we gonna do this so we started off just like in front of a computer the kids were sitting and i was like no this does not look like a legit newscast so um we have a backdrop now we have a microphone that the kids use so you know um they can be heard clearly um we they read off of slides like a teleprompter um so it's really, really cool, and the kids really, really enjoy it. I love it because <laughs> when I was there, um, I remember 
so, there was one student that she was on it and the other two were a little bit more quiet but how had they been developing more of their communication skills because this is this is technology this is communication their oral language ability they're giving they're they're being exposed and of course it's not like it's it's a little nerve-wracking when you know mm -hmm. that there's all the schools listening to you in front have, have some students de demonstrated more enthusiasm over it how is it going with that so we i think when you came in that was like week one and the kids were kind of <laughs> like oh my gosh but they've gotten way better uh we do meet with them before they practice um we give them the slides so they can take home um and then so when they when they come of course day one they're a little bit shy so we try to keep the the same students for at least two weeks oh, just so great. they can yeah just so they can get the hang of it the feel of it and like now they just walk in they take their spots and they yeah, yeah they know what's, <laughs> what's gonna what's gonna happen i love so. it i need to go back and see it and yeah, i think this is something i might uh, uh i might maybe we need to highlight it with pr because this is a really cool innovative tool that you guys are doing thank you for sharing yes I like when you can empower students like that and you know you're maybe some of them will end up being like a newscaster someday I mean you never know like you're they're, you're helping them develop those skills um, it's amazing so Lori let's think back again to like when maybe when you first started teaching is there anything that you wish you would have known about in technology or maybe you wish you would have had back then when you started teaching so when I first started teaching, um, we had just like five desktop computers. Um, so back then, it would have been so beneficial for the kids to have iPads in the classrooms. Um, iPads did exist. <laughs> but it, would, <laughs> it would have been really cool for them to have some in the classroom. Um, I think um, kids are so tech savvy. You just put, you know, something in their hands and they'll just take off with it. So having more technology in the classroom would have uh, benefited students for sure. That's always so, been a dream of ours to have, you know, more technology. And now we have it. Mm -hmm. Like we're here, we're in the present. We have, all students have devices. So we're, it's awesome. I, I love that, um, you know, they can have that, the world at their fingertips. For sure. Mm -hmm. Right. Much, much different now than it was five years ago, right? Um, yes. <laughs> ca kind of piggybacking on on um, what you were saying a little while ago, Lori, um, I think this question kind of relates to it and, and this will be our concluding question for you. What advice would you give uh, a future tech integrator or somebody that wants to become a tech integrator? What advice do you have for them? Um, I think right now with how fast technology is advancing, I feel like everybody um, needs to take risks when it comes to technology. Like if you see something or you hear about something that you think could work in your classroom or that would um, get students engaged in the classroom, I would say just go for it, like risk it. So what's the worst that can happen? You know, like doesn't work okay move on to the next thing but um using whatever is out there um that's what i would say take risks with technology yeah don't be afraid because and it's okay it might not work the right way the first time like you try right. give it a couple of tries because you know there's stuff that happens and sometimes it's not perfect mm -hmm. but if we never try then we'll never get there exactly yeah I totally agree. Like we, we, the the tool that we've been highlighting lately, which is reading progress. If people don't try it, they don't know how amazing it could be. How's it going with your campus with reading progress right now? So I have some teachers that are really, really like um, trying it. They're uploading their um, their files. They really want to use it. And then I have some teachers that are a little hesitant because it's new. It is on Microsoft and not on Google, so uh -huh. you know that transfers. It can be a little, a little challenging. Yeah, it so. is. It is very. It is not very different, but it is different. The aesthetics uh -huh. is different than when I mean, there's change. We're all hesitant. Right. So um, I'm going to touch base with the teachers that are using it and maybe have them 
um, team up with somebody that needs oh, a little like more help idea. just so they can show them um, how to navigate through it again. I love that because usually when you have peers helping each other, the buy-in is, is it's easier too. Mm -hmm. Um, just let us know if there's anything we can do to support you because I know all the amazing things that you're doing in your campus and we are so extremely very proud of you. Very, Thank very you. proud of you. That's why we selected you to be our first elementary Java chat because of everything that you did last year, everything that you have demonstrated, the growth that you've had, your gun ho your go with technology, everything we tell you, I've seen you implement it and, and you're one of our just amazing <laughs> CITs. I just don't Thank have you. any words. I, I'm lost in words on how to describe it. Thank you, Lori, for everything that you do yes, for our thank students. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Well, with that said, this is the end of our Java chat. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. It will be, uh, it is recorded and it will be uploaded to our um, podcast services with Google, Amazon, and uh, Apple. And um, it will be on YouTube. See you later. I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>